I've been off on me holidays for the last week and the guys have been super busy around the yard. They've done a load of mucking out. All the cattle met. Most of the cattle are out now. There's one or two left in the yard. Two stabilizers that are due to come. Uh, we've got one poorly calf in at the minute as well. So uh, the farmer's treating him at the moment. But um, what a difference a week makes. Had a little bit of rain, 15 mil rain over the week. Things are growing. Um, yeah, we're gonna, I'll show you around the yard in a little while. Me and Keith are just gonna um, clear up one of the last remaining sheds. Right, so this is the, uh, the cow shed. The guys have already cleared most of it away, but we're gonna get all this out. We've got some muck heaps that we're gonna go and put them to. The guys have done the far shed. They've been busy. They've, we've only got the back shed to do after this one. The carving clamp as well, that's gotta come out. We've got to get round all the sides in here, wash the walls off. Yeah, loads of little jobs. Always gotta watch your power lines when tipping. Always wanna be tipping on the level. Let it come out nice and slow so it heaps up a bit better. These two young ladies are stabilizers. They are due to carve, but they're a little bit late. So, oh, he's, the, oh, he's already on the case. I'm going to fill the other up with diesel because it needs diesel in it if you're going to walk. Timothy. One round Timothy on the With this, yeah? Yeah, just yeah. leave this on the front then. Where's your round bales? Here well, still. Yeah, you put them here, didn't you? Yeah, alright. Make sure it's good. Do you want it done now? No. Just for later? Yeah. So me and the other half and the kids, we went off down to Limington, which is on the edge of the new forest there. We had a lovely time. Uh, so that's where I've been for the last week. I did have some videos for you to watch, so I hope you enjoyed those. Since we changed the little switch, uh, the not switch, the electrical plug on the back. So this is our 7718S. And apparently, every, uh, since we've changed that little plug on the back, they, uh, the guy came out and changed the plug because we were having some electrical gremlins with the arms. and. Apparently it hasn't faltered since, so we're hoping that may be the end of it. And it, if it is, well then brilliant. You'll probably see everybody out doing silage. We tend to, if we, well, we've actually got all of last year's silage left. It doesn't mean we're not gonna make any because uh, we still might make a few bags here and there. But uh, we uh, typically, we don't start silage until, you know, if, if the grass is there, then the very earliest is you know getting on for mid-May, end of May. We're, we're not after the super high quality silage that you get when you cut grass early. But this year we won't be making that much silage anyway. We'll be leaving it all for the, the hay ground. We saved the silage from last year. Uh, that'll go next year to feed the cattle and we'll have hopefully enough hay to fill the barns this time. Yeah, that was the thought process behind it. We've got a load of mucking about in the back sheds there, moving hay around, getting ready for this year. We've got loads of jobs to do. Who's been doing all the forking around the edges then? Oh, you got nailed. Me and you had to do it last year, didn't we? Oh, I did a bit. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> right, so that young man in there is our... He's in the sick bay. We're gonna, me and Keith are gonna build them a bit of a pen out here so they got a bit more space and they want to be outside as well so just clearing the rest of the muck out of here I think there's a little bit left in the bottom of that clamp as well but the guys have been smashing it I can't believe how much they've done we've cleared this one we've got one shed out around the back to do um, one with the chalk inlet and the chalk has stayed put really impressed with the with the way that's come out and if we've got to put half a load of chalk back in and re-level it, that's nothing, we can do that, that's, that's easy. But uh, it's a good, nice little temporary base in there until we can, eventually, we'd like to concrete the whole lot. But, um, you know, prices are going up and just got to sit back and uh, see what that's going to happen for a little while on that front. But uh, the yard becomes 
you know, it's two yards in one go because this is obviously where the cows would normally be. And then come summertime after we've cleared out, cleared all the muck out, it then becomes a summer yard where we store all the hay and all different bits of equipment and all the rest of it. And I've missed all the fun bits, putting all the barriers away. So hopefully they're in uh, a way that we can build the sheds back up. And we, last year we put them in all back to front. So we had to dig them out. It was a right nightmare. Keith is putting the last scoop in here. I'm going to go and take another load. Then we're going to get the forks out. We get the forks and the, the buckets and the shovels. We get all out around the sides. Then we'll get in there with a um, water tanker, soak the floor, scrub the floor out with the brush on the Ford. And uh, we power wash all the walls down because sometimes we'll use it as a wet store uh, for uh, grain. So we, we get all the uh, cleaning stuff in there and get it all clean as we can. And uh, yeah, it works nice actually. We've got all barriers that go around here built up. Let's keep it. as easy as it looks because you've always got to be watching the roof in here. But Keithy's done it before. So we're over at one of the muck heaps. We're just going to build this one up around it because this is this heap here will do this field and it will do the field up the way there. Uh, not sure about the acres but um, I think the rest of the muck that's at home will get loaded up around here. Got one muck heap next door that's going to do that field over there. We try and stack it up as tall as we can go because the you want it to be all in, stacked on top of each other so it can decompose, you see, because it's going to shrink, 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 shrink into real tight, nice muck that's going to benefit your soils. And basically, it's put this you just put in organic materials back into your soil and it save you know, you'll save a little bit on nitrogen next year. And we all know our nitrogen is very expensive. Um, so we get a muck spreader and we'll come over the fields, spread it all over the muck and uh, yeah, and just improves plant health overall and uh, yeah, hopefully yields and stuff like that. Come autumn or next spring, when, whatever they've changed the rules to, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it all picked up, hire some big spreaders, go muck spreading. We'll show you that when we get to it, but um, for now it's going to get tipped around the outside. Then we'll come with uh, either a digger or um, we'll come with a telehandler and just push it right up, stack it up into a big nice compact heap and that will give you uh, better quality in the end. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> yes! No. Got you! Huh? All of us thought about a nice relaxing week. Have you? While you've been away, we haven't had to stress. Really? Films, yeah. Stress? Stress. Stress probably in the right way. Now, we don't go overly mad in this uh, clamp area, and it's just because it gets used as a bit of a. Um, uh, cleaning off area come summertime so uh, we don't go too mad with it we'll brush it out once to start with right to get this thing going these, this is your PTO speed fast and slow so uh, I guess that's your 540 and a thousand we have it set in slow on here you want the brush turning ever so slow oh Keithy's started off in that other shed goes on there's a handle down here this is we got one of the hydraulics which goes to your uh, your front links so you keep that pumping that moves you up and down on your uh, loader there but we don't need that this is for your back arms so we're just going to drop that down we're going to move our tractor into forwards and you simply just drive very steady 
forwards and drag it to the front. So about there, pick her up, back we go. Me and the farmer have just been having a play with this uh, new set of mowers that turned up. <clears throat> they, um, they took the tractor over to Farrell's and they've hooked everything up for us. What do you think of those? I'll have a bit of kit. I think they're two, um, two three metre sets. So you've got three metres on the front, three metres on the back. We've been walking around them this morning, just having a little look at them, making everything, making sure everything uh, is all right with them. And uh, yeah, when it comes to using them, we'll get Keithy to um, get set up. Once he's set up, we'll get Keithy to uh, have a talk around him because it's a hell of a bit of kit. And apparently, if we do get in a jam and Keithy's tractor's not here or whatever, it will actually fit on my tractor as well. So. Um, It'll be, it's nice that we got, you know, if something goes wrong with the 8S, hopefully not, but if something does go wrong, we've got another tractor here that can pick both sets up and uh, away you go. There's a lot going on with it. I, I, I don't know it. I'm not the man to tell you what's what on it, but I quite like this um, package on the back. It, um, yeah, this, they've got everything in here. Hell of a lot of things going on in here. Rams going everywhere. But uh, once we got it sorted, we're out mowing with it. Keithy will tell you what's what with it. We were wondering what this is for. So anyone know what that's for? Now they do this. <clears throat> they do this in the Coon version as well, because basically this is a Coon mower. I think it's uh, a Coon mower. And John Deere put their paint and their labels on it. And uh, I don't know. We. We were toying with having the Coon one, but the Coon set have a white skirt. And within a day, the white skirt goes brown, green, and manky and looks terrible. So literally what spurred our decision on was the green and black color scheme that John Deere have. Uh, it'll go no lovely on there and uh, Keithy will have his auto steer on. Boop, boop, boop. The, uh, yeah, he'll be loving it. Old mower. I think, you know, if we get in a, a obviously Colin still mows with us, so uh, it will be like having a triple set of mowers. So we'll be able to not, if, you know, weather comes in quick, you know what it's like. If we need to uh, get a good chunk down quickly, we can. Uh, we've got Colin and his mower and we've got this set up here. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to film it going. We're, uh, we're about a month away from any of that yet, so uh, Keithy will um, get used to taking it on and off and um, seeing how it all goes. Ag was saying that the, um, the frame is a, a pull rather than a push because uh, the frame obviously comes over top and pulls the mower along. Apparently that's a better option than a push. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. But this here, that looks out, you know, it's a lovely little neat package. They've done a nice job with that. Anyway, what do you think? Put it in the comments. And if you've got one and there's anything we should know about, let us know. <laughs> I think the old man's in here just started washing down. We'll go around all the walls in there. We'll get in there with the Bowser. Water will go down. We'll soak it, scrub it. Because uh, we do sometimes use that as a, um, as a wet store for grain if it comes to it. Oh, no, oh, no. I didn't realise he was going to pick it up and bring it over here. <laughs> <laughs> right, just uh, got the last load of muck coming out the sheds. All finished there now, thank God. That's hard, oh, hard work with the fork. That is, I hate that job every year. I, uh, that's one of the only jobs I, I don't really like doing, but. We're just coming up the track here, look. And um, Charlie and Darren uh, on a weekend came in and um, yeah, mended the track. So we got a nice grade. I'll show you it one time because we'll be going through the yard soon. Uh, it's our spring wheat outside the farm. I can't tell you how much that's changed in a week. It's, um, I think it's picked up the nitrogen because it's all going dark green. We've hit some rain. 
and um, yeah it looks like uh, it might have just saved our bacon with it a little bit I don't think it's going to be record breaking yields but um, it's going to be better than what it was if it stayed dry that's for sure we're going through a crop video next so we're going to go around everywhere uh, if the weather's nice we'll take the drone uh, there's a lot to get around so I might just uh, go walk it but um, yeah it, uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of things I want to bring you up to speed on, like the beans. I haven't seen the beans in uh, what seems like forever. Um, I want to go and check out wheat. Apparently, there's a little bit of black grass showing in places. So uh, yeah, it's not all um, it's not all the dream, if you know what I mean. Black grass is one of the issues we're always faced with, and apparently we have got some spots here, there, and everywhere with some in it. But uh, I'm just going to get this load tipped off and uh, it's the end of the day here so uh, glad to get these sheds cleaned out. We've got a load of space to put things now so um, eventually I think Peter will probably start. We've got a few more. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm a bit close there Matthew. You are mate. I'm going to get over a bit. Peter's got some uh, sorting out to do along here. Use my mirrors. That's better. That's a better job. over with the uh, store cattle not so many over there this time we um, we had quite a few big ones so we uh, they've all gone off to uh, market um, happened on my week off so I never got to see them go which is a shame I like I like to see them go when they're uh, when they're about ready um, but there's still some good cattle in here as well so come autumn time there's going to be some nice cattle to uh, go again but uh, I think it left about I can't remember 40 odd in here and this field is enormous so uh, what we've done is actually cut uh, two-thirds of it off with an electric wire and uh, we'll silage or hay make it later on but, uh, they're loving it out here i can see uh, they're waiting for the old man the old man's about to bring them some barley we keep giving them barley you know keep topping them up because they want to get big and fat that's the aim of the game uh, so the old man will bring them some barley not only that it keeps them tame and it keeps them nice and uh you know if they see people it means food uh that sort of thing but uh they look really well out here one or two smaller ones in there as well so but the the smaller ones usually are the younger ones because uh, obviously we we carve uh from uh end of january up to may so there's a few months difference in some of them right we're gonna get this it's been soaking for a uh, we soaked it yesterday morning, then we gave it another dose in yesterday afternoon. Farmer soaked it again this evening, uh, this evening, next morning. So uh, we're just going to give it one more soaking. What we're going to do is pull, we're going to get the forward out with the brush on. We're going to sweep everything forward. We're going to take it out there into the clamp because that's where everything gets dirty anyway. And uh, we'll let it dry off outside. And then once it's all uh, thing, it just goes into slop and you can't pick it up. So we'll let it dry out and then we'll pick up uh, the dry debris afterwards. Uh, the old man's gone round the outside and round the posts uh, with the pressure washer. So it's all nice and clean. Um, someone left the fuel on. I should just pull then, am I right? Do you reckon it'll need some change? Yeah, I want a little bit. Can I beat it? Whoa, yeah.
just got to get the brush on the on the Ford can't get right in the in the nooks and crannies so you just got to get away from the edges and then the uh, tractor will do the rest Our uh, 6480 is back. Went off to have its, um, well, we thought it was just a front clutch. We thought it was just a front clutch pack gone on it, but uh, as they dug into it and uh, had a look at it, the whole cab had to come off, that pull the cab off to get in there and have a look at it. But uh, yeah, as they were inspecting it, they found rear clutch patch gone and the housing that it all sits in was gone as well so uh, had a had a bit of work done to this one it was one of those it was either sell it knowing there's a problem we don't like doing that that's not us um, or fix it use it for a few more years and um, yeah you know it might even stay even longer than that you don't know Keithy has it on the hedge cutter so uh, it'll be better for him in the winter um, it'll be well it'll be better for it sits on the baler usually we stick this one on the baler and it's always start, stop, start, stop. So um, yeah, it'll be much better for Colin on the baler. Good to get it fixed, good to get it back. Took a little longer than we um, initially thought, but we didn't, we weren't, you know, it's not summertime in the middle of summer when we're using these things. So we don't, we're not that fussy when it comes to uh, how long it takes. Apparently a big bill for that. We're uh, just out the front of the farm here. And you can see the, uh, the grass is growing. Now, it looks quite impressive, but um, what you can see sticking out the top is a different variety of grass. This is a Timothy mix that we have. Uh, this would always grow first, and then the Timothy comes up um, a little bit after, which is this broad stemmed stuff here. And uh, that sits always a little bit below. And we always try, with Timothy it's a bit of a job because you you've got about a two week window when it's in its prime and you've and we last year we caught it spot on it was uh, absolutely it came in the best we've ever brought it in the heads of the timothy they're like the little fluffy heads you've seen it before i'm sure you have they'll start appearing out of the crop and then it's, it's pretty much you've got two weeks then and if the sun's not shining it's not with you then well hard luck but uh Last year we caught it pretty nice. Uh, farmer just chopped it down on a bit of a whim and uh, the weather came good in the end and we got it all in before the rain came and it was a good job. But And we had a hell of a crop of it as well. We had a good crop last year. It looks like there might be a good crop this year uh, if things keep growing. We've had some rain now. We've got some warmth about us. So uh, a little bit of fertilizer has been put on as well. So that's gonna encourage growth. If we can get two cuts out of it again, brilliant. Uh, we got two cuts last year, but uh, yeah, so you want to be cutting it early enough, maybe a sprinkling of fur on top to get it going again and uh, weather permit and you might have a second cut. And uh, the Timothy does produce another head, but it's nowhere near like the first time. So you want to, the first cut is quite important. You want to get it, you know, you want to get it quite, uh, you, you got to time it right with the weather. It did, it doesn't always pan out like that. The, um, we've got another Timothy lay field over at one of the other farms and, uh, yeah, we cut it. It wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the fittest. Um, we left the bales out to um, heat up. They uh, and but in the end, they went as cow food. They fed the cows all winter, pretty much, which is why we've got enough silage left over. Which is uh, means we didn't have to spend as much on fertilizer, putting it on the grass to make things grow. Farmers out in the background just spraying. Um, Spraying the winter wheat. We're gonna go have a look at the uh, crops in the next video. I think this is a rye grass, Peter tells me. And that always comes out first um, and it always goes over and brown first. So, but uh, the Timothy will come out, we'll cut it. And um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad though, really. Things are on the move. This shed floor is all being washed out. What we did was, uh, I think we soaked it about four times in the end, but uh, yeah, brushed it out with the Ford, 
then soaked it again and just got the last fines out. And when this dries, it'll be absolutely, uh, yeah, it'll be, well, it'll be perfect. Um, which means we can put corn in here and uh, there's no worries with contamination or anything like that. Uh, it's nice and clean. Back shed still to do. We've still got to wash that one out. So that'll be on the, on the job list for next week. Uh, remember, we've still got t-shirts and um, hoodies and hats and all sorts in the, um, in the link in the description. So go and get yourself some merch. And um, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.